Hi, welcome to Pay It Forward. Today's tutorial I'm going to show you how to make a new little mini quilt. This is a little shabby style teapot. You can make it up as a pot holder, as a wall hanging like I have here, or perhaps just a little mug rug. If you would like to make it along with me, simply click on the link in the description below. You can download your free pattern templates and we can get started. So to start our little mini quilt today, after you've uh, downloaded your PDF pattern pieces, you'll have the measurements for all of these uh, pattern pieces to be cut. You'll need your quilt front, and I have mine interfaced. I like to work on appliqueing on fabrics that are quite stable, and I also like my end result to be a fairly firm uh, little wall hanging that holds itself well, like this one. You don't have to interface yours, but I like to do that. You also need to cut a piece of either a couple of pieces of plain felt or some felt, uh, some wadding here, some fine wadding. And that just needs to just extend a little beyond your centre panel. So it only needs to be about, about a centimetre and a half all the way around. It's just a rough estimate. Then you'll need your, your pattern pieces, your little applique pieces. So... I generally use felt for the little teapot. These have fusible web applied. If you use a really strong colour for the teapot, uh, then you can build on that and add your teapot barrel there with a nice print and then add a little heart. And then of course our two little tea bag tabs. I usually do those in red just because they're recognisable as a little tea tag there they all have fusible web ready, ready to iron on you'll also need a little button for the top of your teapot lid and make sure that that little button is small enough that you still can see the top of your your lid around it otherwise you'll lose that nice outline you'll also need a little bit of ribbon to put in our we're setting this one on the diagonal you can put your rivet in the corner and then we will add a little split ring just as we have with that one. This is six millimetre grow grain. You can use whatever ribbon you've got handy. You'll also need to have your side border strips cut and the measurements again will be there. So you'll need two of each. And I've just used a contrasting uh, fabric there that still blends. So I'm obviously making up quite some really quite retro sort of looking colours but this particular little one looks gorgeous made up in all your shabby florals and so on and of course you'll need your piece ready. I've interfaced this one. This is for my back which once our quilt front is assembled we will just cut the back from that piece to match. So to get started we will first fuse on our applique shapes in place and we will leave those little tea bag tabs for now. So first thing we do is to line up our little teapot. It really is quite centered in the middle on the diagonal. If you get yourself a ruler and run it down the center there, you'll be able to line up that little lid with that point and fuse that one on and then the little teapot barrel goes straight over the top you'll see that'll line up nicely there and the little heart just sits a little way it's probably about a centimeter and a half just not even that about a centimeter sits up from the center fuse all of those on and then we'll get to the sewing so there are our little shapes fused into place and now we just work a blanket applique stitch around each of those pieces. Now I have just recently, just last week, put up a new video of how to sew the blanket applique stitch, which is a very clear video on how to do that stitch. And if you're, you're not familiar with that one, you can have a look at that one and it'll show you exactly how to do that. It'll help you with all of my projects. Now today, this is a stitch here that we're going to be working. You can see that on that little one. That will seal those edges nicely. When you're working on such a small project where you really want maximum impact, it's not like we're working on a really big quilt, we tend to want to make those, those little shapes really stand out. And I'm going to be using a white, very fine white perlay thread just to outline the barrel of the teapot. So it will be this whole shape 
that I will work that stitch and also around the little heart and that will really make those two little pieces really stand out because I've gone for black I'm going for a really deliberate clear silhouette so I'm going to just blanket applique in black around the teapot shape there so generally in some cases we would blend and we would match our uh, applique thread to our colors but uh, you can see that if I did that here we would we would lose those edges so a white's really going to make this little one stand out so you make your own color choices but that's just a little tip when you're working on a small project you really want maximum impact and sometimes you really do have to contrast to get that so I'm going to work those uh, those stitches around those shapes and then I'll show you what that looks like. So there's my stitching worked around those shapes and you can see now that that little teapot is really standing out that looks lovely. So our next step is to start adding our borders. So our two shorter edges we just line up right sides together and our seam allowance on for this project is half a centimeter five millimeters so first I'm going to sew on those two it doesn't matter which way you do them whether you put them that side or that side but first we're going to pin you can pin those if you like and we're just going to sew each of those on and then I'm going to press those and press those seams open you can see there I've sewn those two side panels on and I've just pressed that seam out nice and flat and now we just repeat the process with the opposite sides. Now if you've, uh, everybody's seam allowance tends to vary a little and depending on whether you've got interfacing or not. So I've allowed you a little bit of extra length on those two strips. If you find that yours are a little long, you just trim them to size. That's no problems at all, but you've got room for that there. So same thing, we just sew those two on. Now that my borders are on and uh, my quilt front is nicely pressed, I have to say that when I'm working on any project like this, I do tend to press at intervals all the way through my project. I just find you end up with a, with a better finished result and it just makes it easier for your sewing. So take the time to press between each application if you can. Now we're going to add our little tea bag tabs. You can see how I've positioned them there. They've got the fusible web on the back there, just drop one a little lower and just to tilt it to the side and the other one just up a little higher. You can see how they sit there and we'll fuse those into place with your hot iron. Now with these little tea bag tabs, I'm not going to work the edges of these at all. I want them to stay quite sharp looking and to really stand out. What I'm going to do is give an indication that they are hanging. I've threaded up my a needle with some my same white fine perlay thread and I'm just going to come in through the back I've got a knot in the the end of my thread and I'm just going to come out right on that edge and pull that one through and I'm going to give an indication that that little tea bag is hanging on its little string so I'm going to dive back in at the top of that little tab in the center and that will give me my little tea bag string we don't have to let that sit tight I'm actually going to let it sit quite loose there like that and then I'm going to come in through the back again just a little ways down, right in the center there. And I'm going to go back through, just to anchor that little thread in. And you can, if you like, take a little stitch across just to give an indication of a little staple holding that little tea bag tab just so we've got something on there that 
shows us that it's joined. So we've got our little stitch going across, looks like our little staple, a little stitch to hold it, and then this one will just sit nice and loose, you'll find once you've pressed that. Because this is just a little wall hanging, it's, it's not actually going to be used for anything but decorative. Um, if you are going to use it as a pot stand or something like that or a, or a little mug rug you can of course just sew a back stitch embroidery line to indicate that little thread there. So I'm going to do the same with the other one. You can see there my two little tabs now with their little strings and I've actually positioned those and pressed them into place there. So they'll generally sit there quite well. Next step is to add our wadding and you want your wadding piece just to be cut to fit just inside that little half a centimetre seam allowance all the way around. Now mine is fusible so I'm going to just fuse that one straight on the back. You may need to add a tiny bit of craft glue to yours if you're using felt or perhaps uh, just tack it into place will be fine. So I'll just fuse that one on. I'm also going to now cut my quilt back to fit so I will also cut exactly around that finished quilt front for a matching back. So you can see there that I have added my quilt wadding and added my little button there. So now it's just a matter of putting our right sides together to assemble our little quilt and you'll notice that in the top corner where we will be hanging like this one. That top corner, before we put it together, I've actually just snipped that top corner off. Just so that when we sew in our little ribbon loop, we can sew straight across. So this little one will be slipped into that seam, just leaving about a centimetre and a half exposed this way. Remember to allow for your seam allowance and we will sew that little ribbon loop in as we sew all the way around. Leave an opening at the bottom of about seven centimetres will be enough for turning. So it's just a matter of pinning and sewing that seam all the way around. Same seam allowance, half a centimetre and incorporate that little ribbon loop as you go. So there you can see that I've sewn that seam all the way around and then I've just trimmed that seam up and clipped off my corners. I haven't trimmed over that opening because I want a bit of overlap there. So now I'll just turn that one through and give it a press. So there is our little quilt all turned through and pressed. I've actually pressed that little opening under to match up that seam line. Now there's two ways that you can treat that opening. You can either slip stitch it closed with an invisible slip stitch or you can do what I'm going to do. I'm going to sew a tiny little, uh, probably about a two millimetre top stitch around the entire little quilt. So that will close that opening as I do that. Now you can quilt uh, the front of this through all of those layers by hand or by machine, machine in any way you like. I'm not a quilter so I generally tend to keep mine pretty plain but I will stitch uh, as I like to call it stitch in the ditch which is in between exactly on that seam. I will stitch that on my machine between through all those layers and I just find that that really settles that little front panel into place especially if you're using it as a wall hanging and it frames it up really nicely. So like I have with that one, stitch right on that seam line. So there's our final stitching done and I've just popped a little split ring in the top there and there's our little teapot mini quilt all finished. I really do love this one. If you've enjoyed making this one, have a look too. I've got a video for the little cupcake one which is made in exactly the same way so you shouldn't have any problems with that at all. I'd love to see someone make this little one up in some lovely shabby florals. Well I hope you've enjoyed making this little mini quilt with me today. If you have enjoyed this video you could give me a thumbs up that would be beautiful. 
If you do enjoy making little mini quilts, I've got a couple more tutorials which have a couple of little different designs and I'll certainly be making more, so remember to subscribe. Most of all, remember to pay it forward everyone because everybody can and until you join me for my next project, it's hooroo from me. So I'm obviously making up quite some really quite retro sort of looking colours but this particular little one looks gorgeous, made up in all your shabby florals and so on. And of course you'll need your piece ready. I've interfaced this one. This is for my back, which once our quilt front is assembled, we will just cut the back from that piece to match. So to get started, we will first fuse on our applique shapes in place and we will leave those little tea bag tabs for now. So first thing we do is to line up our little teapot. It really is quite centered in the middle on the diagonal. If you get yourself a ruler and run it down the center there, you'll be able to line up that little lid with that point and fuse that one. To interface yours, but I like to do that. You also need to cut a piece of either a couple of pieces of plain felt or some felt, uh, some wadding here, some fine wadding. And that just needs to just extend a little beyond your centre panel. So it only needs to be about, about a centimetre and a half all the way around. It's just a rough estimate. Then you'll need your, your pattern pieces, your little applique pieces. So I generally use felt for the little teapot. These have fusible web applied. If you use a really strong colour for the teapot, uh, then you can build on that and add your teapot barrel there with a nice print and then our little heart and then of course our two little tea bag tabs. I usually do those in red be just because they're recognisable as a little G'day, welcome to Pay It Forward. Today's tutorial I'm going to show you how to make a new little mini quilt. This is a little shabby style teapot. You can make it up as a pot holder, as a wall hanging like I have here, or perhaps just a little mug rug. If you would like to make it along with me, simply click on the link in the description below. You can download your free pattern templates and we can get started. So to start our little mini quilt today, after you've downloaded your PDF pattern pieces, you'll have the measurements for all of these uh, pattern pieces to be cut. You'll need your quilt front and I have mine interfaced. I like to work on appliqueing on fabrics that are quite stable and I also like my end result to be a fairly firm uh, little wall hanging that holds itself well like this one. You don't have on and then the little teapot barrel goes straight over the top. You'll see that will line up nicely there and the little heart just sits a little way. It's probably about a centimetre and a half. Just not even that, about a centimetre sits up from the centre. Fuse all of those on and then we'll get to the sewing. So there are our little shapes fused into place and now we just work a blanket applique stitch around each of those pieces. Now I have just recently, just last week, put up a new video of how to sew the blanket applique stitch, which is a very clear video on how to do that stitch. And if you're, you're not familiar with that one, you can have a look at that one and it'll show you exactly how to do that. It'll help you with all of my projects. Now today, this is the stitch here that we're going to be working. Tea tag there. They all have fusible web ready, ready to iron on. You'll also need a little button for the top of your teapot lid. And make sure that that little button is small enough that you still can see the top of your, your lid around it. Otherwise you'll lose that nice outline. You'll also need a little bit of ribbon to put in our, we're setting this one on the diagonal. You can put your ribbon in the corner and then we will add a little split ring just as we have with that one. This is six millimetre grow grain. You can use whatever ribbon you've got handy. You'll also need to have your side border strips cut and the measurements again will be there so you'll need two of each. And I've just used a contrasting uh, fabric there that still blends 